Democrat Andrea Salinas is new to Congress, representing Oregon's new 6th Congressional District. The district includes Yam Hill and Polk Counties, Marion County, including Salem and Woodburn, and parts of Beaverton, Tiger, Tualatin, and Sherwood. The former state representative and state majority whip in the House defeated Republican Mike Erickson to take the seat. And now she returns to Ion Northwest politics for the first time since her victory in November. Representative Andrea Salinas, welcome back to Ion Northwest politics. Well, thank you for having me, Ken. Uh, you've got your committee assignments. They are agriculture and science, space and technology. Now, were those the committee assignments you wanted? Agriculture definitely um, was my first choice for a committee assignment. And then science, space and technology was really probably my third. But um, education and labor was a committee that no freshman got. So, so yeah, so really I did get my two top choices. So. Well, well, let's talk about uh, those committee assignments. Uh, in terms of agriculture, how do you think you being on that committee could help us here in Oregon? Well, I'm really excited because, as you know, this is a brand new district. And the 6th Congressional District is the heart of the Willamette Valley. So we have a lot of agricultural interests. And unlike other states, we don't really have big ag, like say the Midwest does around corn or soybeans and things like that. We have a really big horticulture industry. So our nurseries, our berries, and some of these other um, farm producers have a different interest. So I think we will be able to bring a unique voice to Congress on the Farm Bill reauthorization, which is up um, this next year. So it's a bill that, you know, bipartisan work takes place and we'll be able to reauthorize, um, yeah, the, a lot of the provisions under the Farm Bill. Yes, and uh, Yamhill County happens to be the heart of wine country as well. So will that factor into any of your decisions on this committee? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I am planning on, um, I'm back home right now for, you know, our district work period. And I have a couple of visits planned to different growers to, you know, to start having these conversations. But these discussions will only, you know, no pun intended, grow as we continue down the Farm Bill reauthorization. But absolutely, yeah. I mean, wine country, as I mentioned, you know, um, horticulture, our nurseries, our, our berries, grass seed, dairy. Um, and we are some, you know, some of the leaders across the nation and globally in this. And I want to make sure we stay that way. Science and technology, uh, there's been a lot of uh, talk, uh, especially from our governor, about uh, uh, high technology, semiconductors. Uh, will that have any uh, type of play in those committees that you're on? Absolutely. So science, space, and technology fits also nicely with, you know, with Oregon, I think, and where Oregon wants to go and where the U.S. wants to go. We used to be a large chip manufacturer, and we've gotten away with, from that, right? We've seen, you know, countries like China really take the lead in that area. And I think under the Inflation Reduction Act and some other bills that Congress passed last session, we're returning to those investments. And Oregon is ripe with Intel and, you know, some of these other um, large R&D kind of companies like Genentech. You know, when I was in the state legislature, I even worked um, with some incubator pharmaceutical um, manufacturers here and, you know, Tigard and Tualatin. So, so I think research and development in the U.S. has been ne neglected for too long in a real serious systematic way. So very excited to work on science, space, and technology on that R&D portion of, um, of the work that we take, that takes place there. You recently announced a Mental Health Monday initiative. Uh, what is that and why is it important? So on the campaign trail, and since I've been talking to county commissioners, local officials, we have to realize that mental health, um, the mental health condition and illnesses here in Oregon is, uh, it's outstanding. And it, it, too many of our families and individuals suffer from mental illness. We're above averages across the U.S. for, for adults as well as for kids. So one out of five kids here in Oregon face a mental health challenge. And we need to wrap our arms around it because it does affect so many areas of, um, you know, it affects uh, school, missed school days, work days. Um, it affects our hospitals and our hospital systems and overcrowding. It affects our houselessness problem, you know, drug addiction, our foster care system. And so getting our arms around prevention and the workforce, making sure that we have enough providers is going to be paramount for me because that is what I'm hearing from this 6th Congressional District is that it leads to other problems in our systems and in our government. Um, and and it, it's costing government a lot of money. So let's figure out how we relieve these families and individuals from suffering. Why does Oregon have uh, higher rates of, of mental health issues than other states? 
I think that's a great question. I think that's something that is, you know, that I think we also need to address. I think, you know, there is definitely, um, you know, everything, you can take everything from seasonal affective disorder, right, we're a grayer state and, you know, and that sort of thing. So that's, you know, I think psychological and, um, but, you know, there is a lot of emotional, mental illness, as well as substance use um, problems that we're seeing here. Big fentanyl problem. That's yeah. right, yeah. So I think all of those need to be considered. But what we know right now is that we just do not have the workforce to address it. And there are barriers within that workforce. So barriers to making sure that folks get trained at all levels. And it does, you know, we're not just talking about the psychiatry level, but things from peer support specialists who can meet people where they are to help them figure out, you know, a path out of that misery. Um, but also, you know, behavioral health therapists. Um, so throughout the spectrum of all the, the care and treatment that is needed, we need to start getting our arms around that and removing those barriers because we do not have enough providers, especially in our rural areas. And that will be a big focus of mine. In Washington, there's been a lot of talk about raising the debt ceiling to handle the uh, nation's financial obligations. Uh, what is your view on raising the debt ceiling? Do you think we should do it? No question. We absolutely have to do it. We have never defaulted on what we owe. And just like family budgets, I pay my bills every month. I pay my creditors. The United States of America has to do the same thing. And we, you know, we cannot default. It will, it will be catastrophic for businesses, for families, um, you know, accessing credit, who need to access credit. And so we absolutely have to raise the debt ceiling. Well, you're the daughter of a Mexican immigrant, a first generation American. Uh, do you acknowledge we have a big problem at the southern border? And if so, what should Congress do about it? There's no doubt we do have a problem at our borders and our borders, you know, our border states and our border communities are suffering because of it. And I think those seeking refuge are suffering because of it as well. And so what I would really like to figure out, and this is a, this would require some diplomatic efforts, is how, what are the, the circumstances in a lot of these home countries to, and pr to preventing people from actually staying in their home countries, right? So is it workforce? Is it human trafficking? Are they being lured to the border by, by empty promises, which I do think is happening? You know, we know that there are drug problems coming, you know, across um, our country's borders as well. So we really need to start, again, going upstream and tackling these problems at their sources. And uh, when you look at the border, it's, you don't view it as an either or situation, like keep everybody out or let everybody in. No, no, not at all. I mean, you know, right now we have um, over 12 million people here who, you know, without documentation status, who are working here, who are producing and helping our farms thrive and, you know, and in our restaurants and hotels and they're part of our communities. But we do have to figure out how we are not going to buckle and you know, allow our, our southern border communities to buckle and, and suffer as well. So it has to be a combination of, and as always in everything in this, it has to be about balance, right? And bringing folks together who are, are calm and reason to figure out what those solutions are. There's a lot more that we could talk about, but we're out of time. Congresswoman uh, Andrea Salinas, thank you very much for coming back to Ion Northwest Politics. Well, thank you again for inviting me, Ken. This has been a pleasure.